We're ready, Mayor. All right. Good evening and welcome to the Thursday, September 17, 2020 special meeting of the Lawrence City Commission. Before we jump into the agenda, we will hear from uh, Diane Stoddard about the Zoom meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening. My name is Diane Stoddard, and as Mayor Ananda said, I'll be facilitating the Zoom uh, video portion of the meeting this evening. With me here is Sherry Riedemann, City Clerk, as she will work alongside Mayor Ananda to facilitate the meeting proceedings. This meeting is being recorded and broadcast on the city's YouTube channel and public access cable channel 25. During the meeting, please mute yourself by clicking on the microphone icon found on the lower left hand of the Zoom menu next to the video icon. When you are muted, a red line will appear over the icon. Muting your microphone during the meeting will make it easier for everyone to hear. You'll just have to remember to unmute and if you want to speak. If in some cases, I may mute or unmute people as needed. Each time you speak, please remember to state your name and title for the benefit of those listening remotely. In the menu, you can turn your camera on or off by clicking the video icon. For the purpose of this public meeting, please keep your video on during the meeting. If you are participating by phone, you can click star six to mute and unmute your phone. For those using Zoom, somewhere on your screen, you will see a choice to toggle between speaker and gallery view. Speaker view shows the active speaker and gallery view tiles all of the meeting participants. And now I'll turn the, meet, the meeting back over to Mayor Ananda. This is Mayor Ananda, thank you, Diane. Um, before we get started, we're gonna take roll. Vice Mayor Finkelbein. Here. Mr. Bully. Here. Mr. Larson. Here. Mr. Shipley. Here. Mayor Nanda is present, so we are all present and accounted for. Before we hop into the agenda, we will hear from Sherry Riedemann about this meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Sherry Riedemann, City Clerk. Um, I want to provide a few reminders to ensure that the provisions of the Kansas Open Meetings Act are met. Commissioners, you must state your name and title each time you speak. All motions will need to be stated clearly. After a motion is made and seconded, the mayor will call on commissioners individually to provide their vote. Mayor, you will then need to announce whether the motion carried and the count of the vote. Various members of city staff are present via Zoom and they must also state their name and title each time they speak. Individuals who signed up in advance to provide public comment remotely will be called upon by name. When you are called on, please unmute your listening device and state your name before speaking. The regular three minute time limit will apply. The mayor will then call for in-person public comment for those without access to technology options and staff present will direct you to the podium to speak following social distancing and safety protocols. The regular three minute time limit will apply. I also just wanted to provide a note um, that as noted on the agenda, tonight's meeting is a special meeting of the governing body. On occasion, situations arise requiring the govern governing body to meet outside its regularly scheduled meeting. City Code Section 1-108C and Resolution Number 7213 state a call signed by a majority of the members of the governing body shall be sufficient warrant for a special meeting and special meetings shall be open to the public. A call for a special, a call for special meeting to be held on September 17th, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. was signed by a majority of the governing body and submitted to the city clerk on September 16th, 2020. Thank you, Mayor. This is Mayor Nanda. Thank you, Sherry. So the first item on our agenda is to approve the agenda. The City Commission reserves the right to amend, supplement, or reorder the agenda during the meeting. Are there any changes that a member of the Commission would like to make, or do we have a motion? This Commissioner, Commissioner Larson, I move to approve. This Commissioner Bully, second. This is Mayor Nanda. We have a motion from Commissioner Larson, a second from Commissioner Bully. Commissioner Larson? Aye. Commissioner Bully? Aye. Vice Mayor Flint, I? Aye. Mr. Shipley? Aye. Mayor Nanda, aye. That passes unanimously. 
And we are ready to move on to our regular agenda item number one, consider adopting on first and second readings, Ordinance 9811, making it a municipal offense to maintain a public nuisance or permit a public nuisance and establishing penalties therefore, and consider authorizing the city manager to execute an MOU with the University of Kansas and other appropriate parties for the enforcement of applicable state laws and or municipal offenses relating to maintaining a public nuisance and permitting a public nuisance. Mayor, this is uh, City Manager Craig Owens. Uh, there, our only item tonight is, as has been prepared uh, rapidly to provide an option for us to enforce um, a, as a municipal offense, uh, what mirrors uh, a nuisance um, provision in state statutes. Um, we, we believe that this is an important uh, piece of um, our in enforcement of uh, our continuing response in the community to the uh, COVID-19 uh, situation. We've had great success as a community in responding uh, and getting good, good results uh, in uh, responding to this pandemic. Um, the, uh, the last month uh, has definitely provided uh, additional challenges. And uh, as we've worked as a unified command and with our partners in the community, um, we we believe we need additional steps to make sure that we get compliance. Um, it, it, it's drawn uh, quite a bit of attention over the last few weeks, in particular last weekend, that uh, there were some uh, activities that um, would clearly violated the public health order. Um, the uh, so the success that we've had with complying community uh, up to this point uh, was it was adequate to have uh, those voluntary compliance. Uh, we were not we're not able to secure that, and we believe this next step in partnership with University of Kansas uh, and the continuing. Um, uh, option for people to um, to issue a uh, complaint um, related to public health order um, violation through the county process and the state uh, statutory process. We believe this additional step uh, in empowering our um, uh, Lawrence Police Department to uh, to pursue these municipal offenses when when we find them in the community if they won't disperse otherwise uh, gives us an important uh, additional tool that we hope we won't need but uh, certainly we, we'd like to have uh, to be successful through the rest of, of this public health emergency response. Uh, the additional item uh, related to the MOU came from a conversation that we've had the the unified command leadership had uh, in wanting to be uh, unified in our in our addressing any of the public health uh, uh, challenges that we have in the University of Kansas uh, uh, Police Department is another uh, important partner in this and would like to um, join our uh, efforts around and off, uh, just off campus to make sure that we get enforcement as well as on campus as well. Uh, I'd be happy to stand for any questions. The MOU is not yet prepared. We're working on that. Um, but the outline of it would be to um, be something similar to what we've done with um, uh, fake IDs, where we've had a joint task force in uh, uh, Lawrence Police Department uh, working alongside and with uh, a task force or uh, with uh, KUPD officers and personnel uh, has been successful in the past. And that's the type of thing we'd like to do with um, these kind of off-campus uh, parties uh, that we've, we've seen uh, occasionally pop up uh, and, and be used for this time when we're in the pandemic. And it's, it's really important and dangerous uh, when we see the gathering of people, unmasked people, and that, that is something that we haven't seen until the last month. And that is, is uh, obviously a a grave concern to us. Those are the two items before you tonight, and uh, we have a number of people, staff on the call to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, yeah. I believe some uh, Dan Partridge is from, from the health department as well. This is Marinata. Thank you, Craig. Um, what questions do the commissioners have? This is Commissioner Bowley. Um, I'd like to get some clarification about what events are covered by this ordinance. Um, are political events and demonstrations covered by this ordinance? They would be. It would apply to any gathering that was a violation of the public health order. 
Thank you. This is Commissioner Bowley again. Um, I'm also, I appreciate the quick work that's been done on this, and I, I'm very pleased that we are having this meeting and considering this. We're looking at adopting an ordinance on first and second reading after being introduced to it overnight. Um, my question, my second question is, is it feasible to put a sunset provision in this so that it would expire, say, at 12, 31, 21? Uh, I see this as pandemic related, and I'm hoping that uh, we could do this in response to the pandemic, but not make uh, such a quick change that, that um, would not be reversed without effort. Thank you. The city manager, Craig Owens, I'd like to defer that to our uh, city attorney, Tony Wheeler. Yes, city attorney, Tony Wheeler. Yes, Mayor Boley, or excuse me, Commissioner Boley, that would be um, permissible. And uh, you could do that by um, adding such language in a motion if this evening. This is Mayor Ananda. Um, I, I just got information that our YouTube stream is not working. Is that, can we check that? Um, it was working. We are having a problem. Okay. Do we need to pause? Yes, it's Mayor. On it's on television, but it appears that we're having an issue with YouTube. If you'll hold on just a moment. Thank you. There's sound on YouTube, Kurt. Uh, there is now. Okay. We're good. Okay. Sorry, Craig. Take three. Okay. Sorry, sorry about that. There did appear to be an issue with the sound. We apologize for the error. It is on now. All right. Um, City Manager Craig Owens. Um, the item before you this evening is uh, to consider an ordinance which closely um, mirrors the state statute uh, related to nuisances. This uh, will make a municipal offense, uh, an enforceable municipal offense for nuisances that uh, uh, in particular violate uh, violations of the public health order that is in place to address COVID-19 and the pandemic response in our community. Uh, the, uh, this community has had uh, an excellent um, uh, record of um, uh, addressing the pandemic, and we, we uh, have had good results with compliance as a community in trying to uh, successfully navigate this uh, pandemic. Um, over the last month, we have seen incidents where um, the public health order has clearly been violated, um, and um, we would like this ordinance to provide a better avenue for our um, local law enforcement, particularly the, the police department, our Lawrence Police Department, to be successful in gaining compliance when we do find these house parties and these large gatherings um, around the campus and, and throughout the city. Our, um, our, the second item before you is a memorandum of understanding, which we would like to um, develop with the University of Kansas that will allow us to have a joint task force with the KU Police Department so that we can jointly address uh, these, these issues. Uh, we think that this will be an additional partnership that will help um, uh, make sure that we, we do gain compliance. Um, our, our hope and expectation is that this will be, send a clear message that these are not uh, these are not appropriate activities, that they do endanger our community. The spread, the direct and the indirect spread uh, of the community is a dangerous situation. And that is what we've all been working hard as a community and to sat the sacrifices have been made to try and gain that. We hope that this will become clear to those few that have been uh, violating uh, the public health order that is necessary to keep us all safe uh, and, and that uh, enforcement action will never be necessary, but we believe that this is an important step. Uh, we haven't had an adequate tool up to this point. We'd be happy to respond to any questions. We have other staff here and uh, I believe um, officials from the health department are here as well to uh, help support this. This is Mayor Ananda. Thank you, Craig. And I believe we had two questions. If you wouldn't mind re-asking those, um, I think it was Commissioner Boley. Thank you, Mayor. This is Commissioner Boley. The questions that I posed were, um, which activities does this cover? Does it cover political events and protests? 
the city manager, Craig Owens, it, it would apply to any um, violation of the health order, any gathering of any kind for whatever purpose. Second question that I posed was whether it would be feasible to include a sunset provision in, in the motion so that it would expire uh, at, say, uh, December 31st of 2021. I see this as pandemic related and I would not, I'm really not interested in uh, making a permanent change to our code when we have emergency first and second reading and we're responding to an emergency. City Attorney Tony Wheeler. Uh, yes, we could add a sunset provision uh, to this ordinance if that's the commission's will. This is Commissioner Boley. Thank you, Tony. Um, do you have some sample language that we could avail ourselves of if we make that decision? City Attorney Tony Wheeler. Yes, I do. I can um, retrieve that now or we can uh, we can discuss that later. Thank you, Tony. Uh, this is Commissioner Boley. I think we should just discuss it later. I may be the only one who's interested. This is Mayor Nunder. What other questions do other commissioners have at this time? Uh, Mayor Commissioner Shipley, um, I want to echo something that uh, Commissioner Boley said earlier. I'll, I'll be sure and give him credit, which is to thank staff for being. Um, so responsive uh, to our concerns on Tuesday. That meeting ended at midnight um, and staff has uh, been able to come up um, with a fair idea, interesting solution um, in just a couple days. So I do wanna thank them for that. Um, I did wanna clarify, however, and I don't know, this would perhaps be more for um, Dan Partridge with the health department. Um, the city manager said this would um, be about anything violating the health order. I understood that to be kind of three parts, which was the number of people in the gathering, um, the use of social distancing, the six feet, and masks. Um, do you see those things as um, equal in importance um, or... Um, uh, if you see one uh, is more important, um, I'm not sure quite how to say. Commissioner Shipley, this is Dan Partridge, Director at Lawrence Douglas County Public Health. And I think I can provide a partial answer to that. I, the public health order does um, have a, a, a mask gathering limitation, a requirement for a mask and, and the social distancing, distancing pieces along with um, restrictions around establishments that, that sell alcohol. Those are kind of the three tenets of the order. Um, I'm not, I think the other piece around um, enforcement of that public health order is really more of a legal question because as I'm understanding it, not all three of those are, are equally easily um, enforced through this process. So I'm gonna turn it back to Tony Wheeler or somebody else to maybe manage that part. The attorney, Tony Wheeler. Yes, um, the, the ordinance language says that it's unlawful to maintain a public nuisance. And then a public nuisance is knowingly causing or permitting a condition to exist, which injures or endangers the public health, safety, or welfare. Um, I would say that this ordinance is probably primarily directed at the large gatherings, and that will, that will be the focus of enforcement, um, I think. Um, preliminarily, and Chief Brixius is on the call as well, and he may he may wish to respond to that. Thank you, Tony, Interim Chief Anthony Brixius. Yeah, so in some of the statutes that we were previously discussing that were actually pertinent directly to the health order, um, in chapter, one of them was listed in chapter 48, and the Attorney General's office gave some clear guidance that it did not want law enforcement in the assisting of the masks. So if we were looking at that just purely as its only element, that would not be something that we would be enforcing. I think this is primarily directed at these large gatherings um, where people are very close in contact. 
uh, Commissioner Larson here, I had, I had a question. Um, since we um, basically talked about a narrow scope of what this in, is intended to prevent, should we look at narrowing the, the language within the ordinance to reflect that? I mean, I think it goes hand in hand with Commissioner's Bowley question about having a sunset provision. So should we look at narrowing that definition and what ramifications would that have? City Attorney Tony Wheeler. Well, um, we drafted it in this manner because it tracks the state statute. And um, <clears throat> we believe that there is appropriate case law that supports it. And um, this was our best recommendation with the short amount of time that um, we had to prepare this. I think that the draft ordinance as written um, will be sufficient and law enforcement have uh, discretion to um, uh, on their enforcement measures. And uh, so I think that with those things combined, mm -hmm. I would recommend the ordinances drafted. Commissioner Larson, I do, um, I, I, I'm always concerned when I, when I hear this is what the intent of the ordinance is, but it doesn't seem to be clearly detailed in that ordinance. So, um, so I'm having a hard time with that. And maybe we can just have more discussion from other commissioners. <laughs> Commissioner Shipley, um, I think just to piggyback on that, I seem to re recall fairly recently us having a little bit of a legal lesson on um, intent. And I don't know, um, especially since we're doing this right now and, and maybe considering having um, a sunset, if Tony could talk to us about intent and the way it's um, applied. City Attorney Tony Wheeler. Um, when a court is interpreting a statute, they will the court will look at the plain um, plain language in the statute. Um, they will go to intent only if there is any particular language in the ordinance that is ambiguous. Um, so that that is how courts review intent. This is Vice Mayor Finkeldy. Um, I don't do criminal law all the time. I, 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 have, I have been a prosecutor before for a municipality and um, Tony might, might correct me on this as I, as I say this, but so this language mirrors KSA 216402. So, so as if we do nothing, this statute's on the books and it's a state, it, you know, if someone violates it, um, they are violating state law. And so um, if tonight there was a party and we did not pass this, the the police could enforce 21642, the exact language that we have before us tonight. The difference would be that if it's not a municipal code, the LPD would have two choices. They would have to arrest somebody or they would have to gather information and send it to the DA who would then consider the affidavit and you know, four to six to 10 days later issue an order. Um, by making this a municipal violation, we add the ability for them, for the LPD and KU along with the memo to write a ticket, write a ticketable offense if it's a municipal code. So rather than just having you choose between taking information and worrying about it later or arresting somebody, this gives them the ability to issue a ticket. So as I listen to this, we're not creating a new crime and we're not creating a new, um, um, you know, some, making something illegal that wasn't currently legal. We're just allowing it to be processed through our municipal code. At least that's my understanding. Tony, am I close on that? <clears throat> City Attorney Tony Wheeler. Yes, Vice Mayor, you are 100% um, accurate on that point. The other advantage of making it a municipal citation is this will be um, then able to be adjudicated in municipal court as opposed to district court. We heard from the district attorney yesterday that if we were to rely on the state statute only, in addition to the time that it takes to forward the complaint, and get the case started, it will take the court several months before the case will be set for a hearing. 
And um, by going through municipal court, it should be handled in a, in a more expeditious manner. Uh, Commissioner Larson here had a, a question about, will this ordinance allow us to actually require uh, uh, the party to disperse from, from the property until they're in compliance? City Attorney Tony Wheeler, I would um, refer or defer to Chief Brixius to talk about uh, the approach they plan to take. I believe that um, our efforts are going to be to uh, obtain compliance um, cooperatively at first. Interim Chief Anthony Brixius, yeah, Tony is correct. Um, the direction has already been given to staff and uh, we have issued a memo regarding the state statute is to uh, use this state statute to gain compliance. If we were not able to gain compliance, we could then issue a citation. We could arrest, but that has been discouraged, uh, strongly discouraged. We The goal is to not have these events. I don't think it's to punish anybody. It's certainly not to arrest anybody or to engage um, in a confrontation with a great amount of people and it applies specifically to the pe person who's in control of the event or the residents and so if we would determine if it was applicable or if it was um, reasonable to try and break up a party it does take quite a lot of uh, amount of people to do that so usually we try to gain compliance when we do that otherwise we could bring in a large amount of people we can also address the offender um, on the following day when there's not several hundred people around Mr. Larson, thank you. So would this look something like when you handle a noise complaint where you go to the operation and, and um, tell them to turn the music down and they turn it down and then you get a call half an hour later and the same thing is happening. Um, would there be warnings given at the, at the event um, to allow people to comply? Um, or would this just be a situation where you would go there, you would actually ticket the person, whoever needs to be ticketed, and you would just try to disperse it then? Would there be opportunities to come into compliance? Is that what we're looking at? So very similar to the noise the complaint where there would be a warning with one exception. Uh, the way our noise complaint works is that um, we would have to be called back. Um, but we, what we were using this as is the warning is then immediate. So they immediately need to begin complying and assisting us with um, having the party cease. But they would have the opportunity to, to do that prior to any citation. Mr. Larson, again, so if, if they don't immediately comply, um, would there be tactics used to try to get them, get the, the folks to kind of move, move out and move away to come into compliance? Or, I mean, what sort of time frame are you talking about to allow them to come into compliance? Because the ordinance, sorry, interim chief Anthony Brooks is, um, so because the ordinance um, is, is fairly specific towards um, the person holding the event, the renter, the, the homeowner, um, we, we, we would use um, a number of police officers to help um, encourage the crowd to go away. That's typically what happens with noise complaints as well. That is typically successful. Every so often it is not. Um, in this particular case, though, if, if they decline to have the party cease and people decline to move, that's probably when we would be in the citation process. And depending on how that goes afterwards would depend on how we would handle it. I, I wish I could be more specific and give you every instance, but it, it becomes a very dynamic situation. Thank you. This is Commissioner Larson. So what I'm I think I'm hearing you say is that if you get called to a situation or you are aware of a situation, you go to this household, you are going to, you're, you're, um, the police officers are going to make every effort to disperse the crowd at that time versus coming back if they've been given a warning. Interim Chief Anthony Bricks, that is correct. Um, and we'll assess how reasonable and how feasible that is. Um, and because the people, the person that we would be able to detain and our ability to get to them matters, um, as far as making compliance or issuing a citation, if it becomes a situation where we did not believe that was appropriate at the moment, um, where we were able to do that, um, to identify that person, well, we would still get to encourage the crowd to leave and, and try to use reasonable means to do that. It may end up that we come back into a follow-up investigation to make sure that those, those people who were involved are, um, cited properly. Thank you. Commissioner Shipley, um, I want to follow up on um, Commissioner Larson's line of discussion there. 
um, in the MOU or in the discussions you're having with KUPD um, in the scenarios we've talked about, how, how do you see their role or how will they collect information that they need? Interim Chief Anthony Bricks is, so the partnership with KU um, allows us additional uh, workforce, workforce power. Um, this is probably gonna be an assignment that's outside our normal patrol because it would take several people to do. Additionally, KU police has the direct link to the university and the university would be at least reviewing under their student code of conduct. So it, it provides an additional enforcement arm that um, someone throwing a, an event may be more sensitive. Commissioner Larson, I had another question for Anthony. Um, is when we get calls on this, or we are aware of a situation where this is happening, um, and we're going to attempt to do enforcement, are we going to have a member of the KU Public Safety Department with us? Chief Anthony Briggs is um, in the event that it's a time that we're going to run the task force because this task force won't be run twenty four hours a day we would, but it will it will not be a situation where we would necessarily call them every time, but we would still have the information and could pass it on to them at a later point. For instance, tonight, for example, tonight, the task force is not up and running, but the city of Lawrence police officers can still enforce this. Okay. Commissioner Larson, thank you. I guess, uh, could you explain the task force? I'm, I'm just, I'm a little fuzzy on that. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Interim Chief Anthony Briggs says, in this particular case, it's it's KU Police and the Lawrence Police Department combining their resources to, to make sure that we are responding uh, together collectively. And then um, through, through our um, collective efforts, we'll also be able to give information to the University of Kansas and Health Department. Thank you. Commissioner Larson again. So is this task force being uh, put together um, in response to the MOU that we're, we're going to have with KU, or is this something totally that we've always had? Interim Chief Anthony Bricks, this is specific to these events. However, we have had task force with KU before. Um, previously, if my recollection is right, it was due to underage drinking um, at some of the bars. Um, so it's not uncommon for us to work with the University of Kansas Police. Um, and this, this task force is, is, so while it's a new thing and specific to this event, it's not new, the occurrence, so uh, the, that type of event happening is not new. Um, thank you, Anthony. Commissioner Shipley, sorry, Mayor. Uh, just one more thing, since we've got the chief uh, in the hot seat here. Um, uh, I, I hear you saying that, that you will need um, some extra help and that KU will be part of that. But um, how can we make sure that we give you all the tools that you need? Um, I am apologetic that that's not what happened previously and that your officers were caught in that situation. And I wanna be uh, sure that we're giving you everything you need if, if we adopt this. Interim Chief Anthony Bricks is, so admittedly, this is a very unfamiliar statute to almost all of us. It's not one that I have ever uh, seen before or, or used, um, but the difference is, is we were relying off of statutes that were outlined in the health orders, whether it was the governor's uh, orders or the county health orders, and those were not really clear um, about the criminal and civil side of it, and so Part of my concern was stopping and detaining someone um, or forcing identification and into a situation where we may get into an arrest or even a physical confrontation without knowing for sure that we there was a criminal element um, there. And so with the addition of, of this statute or learning more about this statute, it's in um, chapter 21, which is specific to the criminal code. So I feel much more comfortable about that. Um, again, you know, I, I stated the other night that this is not a really a space that we would like to be in, um, and I, I stand by that statement, um, but we are, we are going to be uh, judicious with how we do this. We're going to be fair and reasonable and give every opportunity of compliance, and it's not our intent to go around um, and handing out citations or arresting people, but we do have that element um, if we need to, to make sure that the community is safe. Commissioner Larson, again, um, I'm going to go back to, you know, my earlier discussion regarding whether this ordinance should be more narrowly focused. Um, 
and I would like to hear more about it. I mean, it's obvious we've, um, our staff has stated that this is geared towards enforcing the health orders that are, that are in place right now. Is that, should the, should the um, ordinance reflect that specifically, that this is targeted towards um, if you violate the public health order? And I know it, it's got words in there regarding public health, safety, and welfare, but if we are focusing only on um, the health orders that are in place right now, should the language for such as that be um, actually part of this um, ordinance? <laughs> I'm sorry, Tony, did you want to speak to that? The city attorney, Tony Wheeler, um, I will ask uh, supervising city prosecutor Elizabeth Hafoka to, to jump in. Um, there will be there will be elements that will have to be proved in order for a conviction to occur. And um, it will it will be tied to establishing that there was a threat to the public health and safety that references the orders. So um, if, if Elizabeth could step in and explain that just a little bit, I think that will reassure the commission. Good evening, this is Supervising City Prosecutor Elizabeth Hafoka. Um, I did some research earlier on this particular language and I did find a case uh, that applied uh, to a grain elevator in a city in Kansas from 2013. And the court in that case looked at a public nuisance ordinance with similar language to ours and upheld a conviction. The argument presented in that case was that the language was unconstitutionally void for vagueness as it applied to this green elevator. And the court specifically addressed the language of injures or endangers the public health, safety, or welfare and found that those words are commonly used previously judicially defined and having settled meaning in the law. Injure means to cause any harm or damage, and danger means to place in circumstance where injury may occur. Black's Law Dictionary defines public health as the health of the community at large. It defines public safety as the welfare and protection of the general public, usually expressed as a governmental responsibility. And it defines public welfare as a society's well-being in matters of health, safety, order, morality, economic, and politics. They found that the ordinance uh, sufficiently gave warning and fair notice as to the prohibited conduct in light of common understanding and practice. And it protected against arbitrary enforcement of the law enforcement officers because they had to consider how the community was affected how the public was affected, not just their own subjective judgments or unique feelings about the condition. So those would be the arguments that we would make in court if someone raised that concern. Also, in looking at the emergency order of the local health officer on page one, it does say, whereas such conditions endanger health, safety, and welfare of persons and property within the border of Douglas County, Kansas. And tying those things together, we would argue to the court that it is not unconstitutionally vague. And we would um, point the court to this particular case law, which seems to support the language of this ordinance. This is Vice Mayor Finkel. I just following up for a second on that. If we change the language of the ordinance, would that um, open up, open us up for uh, a lawyer to make an argument that the added language made it vague? I think that would depend on what change you make to the language. So it's possible, depending on what those changes are, um, if you wanted to be more specific, then I think uh, we could look at that language uh, if you wanted to change the language to not refer to public health, safety, or welfare, um, then it would make it more difficult for us to rely on this particular case law in support of the argument that the ordinance is, is constitutional. Thank this you. is Ananda. Is it feasible to say public health, period, and pull out safety and welfare and still rely on those definitions within the case law? Well, that would, I could make those arguments to the court. Um, I don't know how the court would rule because I'm not aware of um, case law that just takes that specific language of the ordinance without the rest. So it's possible. 
Um, but I, I couldn't say for certain what the ruling would be from the court. This is Mayor Nana, that's a reasonable response. <laughs> um, can Tony, would you mind talking about what the definition of maintain is? Maintaining, um, as used in this, uh, excuse me, city attorney, Tony Wheeler, maintaining would be um, allowing it to exist. Um, for, for instance, as it relates to a large party, um, having a large party, uh, having a large gathering greater than the order permits, that would be maintaining. This is Mayor Ananda. So there, it's not like a there aren't time-based factors or um, being asked once not to and then and then refusing to comply. Like maintain isn't the same. It seems like there are two definitions of maintain that could possibly be interpreted from this. Tony Wheeler, city attorney. Well, obviously, if the police officers arrive and the a party appears to be dispersing, then that would not they would not have the basis to say that the that it was being maintained. So, um, and as we heard from Chief Brixius, there is going to be the opportunity for compliance and education. And if the officers return and the situation remains, um, there's certainly a strong case for that being, ma being maintained. This is Mira Nunes. So then would that first a warning and then continuing the behavior have to occur in order for maintain to be satisfied? City Attorney Tony Wheeler, um, that's our recommendation. I believe that's the approach that the um, officers are taking. Um, there could be a situation, however, as I said, that if the officers are there for an extended period of time and there's no evidence that it is dispersing that an allegation or a charge could be made that it was being maintained. This is Mayor Nanda, thank you. Um, I also wanted to ask if um, this would apply. So for example, we allow the permit, the, the alcohol permit for the car show. Um, would this also be applied if they go to the number of folks past the recommendation to that event? City Attorney Tony Wheeler, yes, if the order remains in place and the event attracts larger than the amount that is permitted by the current health order, I believe that that would be subject to this ordinance if it's passed. This is Mayor Nanda. Is that based on, so for example, if everyone there was wearing a mask and maintaining social distancing, but that number was larger than what was allowed within the ordinance or within the, um, the health order, um, would that then apply? City Attorney Tony Wheeler, well, um, if there is the ability to maintain social distancing and there is the mask wearing such that the, tra the transmission is uh, reduced, then I think that um, perhaps that, that would not rise to the level. Um, I think it will have to be evaluated. The circumstances will have to be evaluated at the time. Um, this is Mayor Anand again. I, I wanted to know if, so let's say, for example, there is a house party and um, law enforcement does reply or respond to that. And at the house party, one individual who is a renter is somehow identified in that space. Um, would only that individual then who is identified be ticketed? So one ticket out of 100 kids at the party, is that what I'm understanding? City Attorney Tony Wheeler, yes, the intention is to um, not try to ticket everyone that's in attendance, but rather to direct it to the person who is responsible for, for the gathering, the, the tenant that threw the party, um, those people that are occupying the, the structure where the party is existing. This is Mayor Nanda. Would there be any attempt to gather information on the other individuals in attendance in order to pass that information along to KU so that they can um, engage in measures for, for those students? I 
I don't know who that's for, whether that's for chief um, or uh, interim chief. Or Sorry, interim chief Anthony Bricks is. Um, so the order or the, the ordinance, the law is, is pretty specific to who it applies to. Um, we could, uh, so as we've talked about a little bit about before, um, we want to be lawful in our stops of people. And so there are other ordinances that could apply where we stop um, and, and maybe identify some folks. But the reality of it is also is that in a p very large party, especially if it's beginning to disperse, our, even if we have a lawful authority, um, we simply wouldn't most likely have the um, staffing to try and stop everybody who was at that party. So there may be some very specific incidences that are based on conduct of the person that would allow us and, and would, would uh, lead us to stop them. Um, but the likelihood of us trying to identify 50 people is, is just not, it's not a reality at, at that time of night uh, with a large gathering of that size. Thanks, Marinanda, thank you. Are there other questions from the commission before we go to public comment? Yeah, Commissioner Arson, I do have uh, another question. So is, um, again, I want to just go back to this idea of narrowing this uh, ordinance um, to be more targeted towards what our intent is. Is there um, any interest or any discussion or maybe, and Tony, I would ask you to pipe in on this if this is, if this is even possible, is that last part of um, A of the ordinance, instead of using the words to exist, which injures or endangers public health, safety, or welfare, that we put in their language that says that violates the, the emergency public um, health order that's in force at the time. Uh, if, this is not, if there's not a, a public health order in effect, then the, the ordinance would not um, be applicable. This is Randy Larkin, Deputy City Attorney. We, we discussed this. We thought this did narrow it down compared to what's in the health order. The health order uh, says you have to wear masks. So if we make the health order against the law, then two people standing on a corner within six feet of each other would then be in violation. We wanted to aim this at just basically at the house parties. That was the purpose of making this a public nuisance law as opposed to a violation of the health order law. This may or not, go ahead. Uh, I, I did maybe have a couple questions for Dan Partridge, Mayor, if that's okay. Um, I, I appreciate that you're with us again, um, even though we saw you very recently. Um, thank you. Um, and I think the message from the health department has been persistent and consistent. Um, and I, it's interesting the way that this uh, part of the compliance played out. Um, Often it was mentioned this amount of $2,500. Do I understand that to be um, a fee or citation that would only have applied to restaurants and bars? The uh, approach we're currently working under for uh, enforcement of the establishments that serve alcohol are to not rely, rely on a, a criminal kind of process, but rely upon the authorities that the local health officer has, Dr. Marcelino. Um, and so we're taking a educate once, educate twice um, on the third strike. Um, we would uh, go to Dr. Marcelino and ask that he issue an order to close just that business um, until such time that they can demonstrate, a, you know, uh, the ability to comply with the order. So it's, it's really not about fines. It's about compliance. And, and um, with the, the, the penalty at the end really just being uh, a specific closure of that establishment. Uh, Commissioner Shipley, um, so I want to verify what you just said there, which is that Dr. Marcelino does have the power to stop an establishment that is estimated um, for all of the reasons in the health order um, to be in violation. Is that correct? That's that's correct. D um, Dan Partridge, Director of Lawrence Douglas County Public Health. Um, Commissioner Shipley, and I don't expect you to answer this, I, but <laughs> then I wonder why the necessity of restraining uh, the restaurants and businesses to um, the hours that have been restricted when you have a scalpel 
that you could use? Well, that scalpel has to be applied against against some sort of order. Um, if we had no order, we would we, we would have um, a lot of ambiguity about what it is we're expecting from people. And, and if we aren't clear on our expectation, it's hard to then say you're closed. Um, that, that, I, that's my answer. Um, Mr. Shipley, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mayor Nanda, any other questions? All right, we will open it up for public comment. First on the list is Sally Zagrai. Please go ahead, you have three minutes, state your name. Okay. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Sally Zagrai, yeah. Executive Director of Town Lawrence, Inc. Um, You're very quiet. Are you able to get closer to your mic? This is Mayor Anona. We can barely, barely hear you. Mayor, this is Commissioner Shipley. Um, since we're already behind a little bit, maybe we could move on to some of the other speakers and let Sally uh, work out her technical difficulties. Mayor Ananda, I don't know that we're behind anything. It's our meeting. Um, I wanted to get Foley, she, she appears to be muted. Yes. Can you hear me or do you want, did you want somebody there, else to go? There we go, Sally, we can hear you now. We could hear you. Sally, would you like us to jump to another individual and come back to you? I can see you, so if you want to shake your head in one way or the other. Okay, yes, um, we will, here we go. Next on our list is Chris Flowers. Please go ahead, you have three minutes, state your name. Hi, um, this is Chris Flowers. Um, first off, I'd like to say, did anyone reach out to the college kids to get their input on this ordinance? That I mean, because it's mainly going to be enforced on them. If we put in a four-way stop sign, we we let we mail all the neighbors because they're the ones going to be affected by it the most. So by that same logic, shouldn't we at least be reaching out to the people that are going to be affected most by this? Then also, I would just have a question: How come we can come up with this ordinance in less than a week? But the eight can't wait is taking over three months. I mean, and here's another thing I don't like. We, we're talking about defunding the police, and now we're talking about giving them more power. Um, if anything, I would like to see the city commission schedule another special uh, commission meeting where we talk about eight can't wait. And we create whatever's, whatever department's going to take over the noise complaint issue. We um, give them this issue. And instead of the cops enforcing it, it's who's ever going to be enforcing the, um, the noise complaint issues. Um, let's see. Um, also, I want to see also language added that limits the public nuisance to being COVID related only. Like what about fireworks? Could, could a 
a cop gives someone a ticket for shooting off of fireworks saying, well, it could land on someone's property and burn the place down. I mean, that kind of uh, creates a public nuisance. So I'd like to see the language limited to just being COVID related. Um, also, I, if, if there are now, if there's another Black Lives Matter protest, that situation, like, look at the last time they were playing music and had kind of a party atmosphere going. Next time that happens, are the cops going to ticket them? Are, and are you commissioners, how, how are you going to deal with the heat when the cops start um, ticketing protesters? Or is this going to be something, well, it's Black Lives Matter, that's a, a, that's a liberal um, movement, so we're going to allow that, but the not taking COVID serious, that's more a Republican type thing. So we're gonna enforce that more more harder than we're enforcing the other stuff. And let me see. Also, what about the football? I how are these large parties? How is that that much worse than the high school football game? Because I drove by that and it didn't look to be COVID safe. So I just think it's mm -hmm. kind of BS. All, like you're mainly going after one group of people. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Mayor Nanda, thank you. Next on our list is Renee Kuehl. Please go ahead, you have three minutes, state your name. Mayor, this is Sherry Riedemann, City Clerk. Renee messaged me that she was gonna be unable to, to attend tonight after all and provide comment. This is Mayor Nanda, thank you, Sherry. Next on the list is Eric Kirkendall. Please go ahead, you have three minutes, state your name. Eric Kirkendall, 714, <clears throat> excuse me, Mississippi Street. Lawrence, um, I want to commend the staff and the city commission for moving so fast on this really important issue. I, I only want to say one thing. I, I think you all know it, but this is not a minor nuisance type issue. I sent you all a um, link today to a, a news article in the Washington Post about a wedding in Maine that had just 75 people at it, 65 people at it. It resulted in 175 cases of COVID and seven deaths uh, among people who weren't there. So I thank you, I encourage you to vote yes, and uh, I really appreciate that you're doing this quickly. Thank you. Mayor Nanda, thank you. Um, we will go back to Sally Zakrai. If you have your technological issues worked out. Thank you, Diane. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. See, that's what I get for getting a new computer and not having like my oldest laptop ever known to man with no camera. Um, I'm Sally Zagra, I'm executive director of Downtown Lawrence Inc. And I'm also um, a 17 and a half year resident of Lawrence. Um, I had sent an email late in the day to the commissioners and to um, the the um, agenda's email basically stating that um, obviously these house parties last weekend that were on the national news were quite a shocker. And my daughter and I actually drove by those parties at about 7.30 on Saturday night. And my 15 year old um, who would love to get out of the house, believe me, she wants to get away as fast as she can. She, she looked as we drove past and said, you know, this is, where we live. Thanks for not respecting us. There's not a mask in sight. Um, and I thought, wow, I'm, I guess I'm doing something right because this kid gets it. Um, and there's, there's other unsafe behavior. And so I know right now kind of everybody's kind of piling on KU and the students. And um, I appreciate um, in the article that was in the paper that both our city manager and our um, director of public health, you know, we, Yes, we've talked about this for month that, months that we want people to voluntarily comply, but that um, has been shown that that's not going to work. And there's other unsafe behavior that goes on. I do see it downtown, a lot of congregation, you know, you can go by Silas and Maddie's or other um, popular spots and people are mixing and mingling. They've got their masks down, maybe they're eating, drinking, maybe they're just chatting. Um, and so that's very concerning. And it's concerning because I have a 10th grader and eighth grader who are doing virtual school at least 
until January. We have um, immune and health issues here in the home. And we've actually been home since before spring break. Um, and in the meantime, our businesses have tr tremendous restrictions that have been placed on them. And Commissioner Shipley, thank you for bringing up the, the curfew on um, sale of alcohol. And then um, restaurants and bars having to close at 10 p.m. Um, at least in the restaurants and bars, there's some control that can be um, initiated. And I do think that the vast majority of the restaurants and bars with whom I'm talking on a daily basis, they're very conscientious about enforcing the best practices. And so, you know, they've spent money, they've spent time that their business is, has been just drastically affected. And I, I would like to see, and I don't know if this ordinance is the is the answer or the be all end all, but we have to have some way that we're enforcing behavioral standards across the community. And as Commissioner Shipley mentioned, being more surgical in our approach, because we, uh, Mayor, I, as, thank you. Mayor Nanda, thank you, Sh Sally. Is there anyone present in chambers who would like to give public comment on this issue? No, Mayor. This Mayor Nanda, okay, thank you. We will bring it back up to the commission. This is Vice Mayor Finkelai. Um, you know, obviously we had a little bit of discussion on Tuesday night and you know, I had some concerns about, you know, creating a new law or creating a new crime, um, in particular, um, tying that to a health order, which um, has its own criminal um, statute already. It's just harder to enforce. Um, but I do, I, I like this approach because, um, you know, we're not commit, we're not creating a new crime here. But the crime is under state law. Um, and what we're actually doing is allowing a, a way for it to someone to be ticketed and not arrested for this crime. Um, and so to me, it's it's if, if we if we vote this down tonight, um, it's still a crime and a house party could still be broken up. And the problem would be the option would be to arrest somebody. Um, or go through the long form affidavit. And if the officers were there to break up the party, they most likely would be forced to arrest somebody if that was their intent. So by giving them this option of writing a ticket, um, we're actually creating a way to create enforcement, um, but actually doing it in a way that um, um, creates less confrontation, certainly creates less people going to jail, which we don't want at this point. So, I mean, I, I think it's a way to send a message that we intend to enforce it, um, but not doing it in a way that uh, creates something new. And I guess for that same reason, um, I, I hear what Commissioner Lawson is saying, and even what Commissioner Bully is saying about the sunset, about trying to tie this more closely to, to COVID or this incident. But again, if, if, we, um, if we sunset it, well, it's still gonna be a state law the day after our municipal law sunsets. And as we're changing the wording of it, I think that creates more confusion because you have a state law that allows one, you know, that has one crime. We've now created a new and separate crime. Even if we only add two or three words to it, it's a new and separate crime that's not the same. I'd much rather rely on the protections of state law, rely on the protections of the court cases we have and, and leave the language exactly as it is in the state law and I think that offers us uh, maximum protection and maximum flexibility. That's Commissioner Boley. Um, I appreciate the conversation, the discussion, all the information. Um, and also thank you to staff and the Unified Command for working on this and, and you know, bringing it to us. Um, I appreciate the analysis that was provided by Tony and, and by uh, Vice Mayor Finkeldy. I support this, but I would like to see it sunsetted to December 31st of 21. If it works, we can always continue it again, but I'm really reluctant to change the code um, with just this notice. 
without having a sunset. This is Mayor Nanda. I think that I was the most vocally critical about this on Tuesday. And so I will kind of talk about my process around this. Um, I think that when we're looking at the values upon which we're making our decisions, um, that is what weighs most heavily for me because we have this value that we're, we're working toward with the um, upcoming conversations around race, particularly around law enforcement and race. And this desire, at least explicitly stated by me, to pull back on law enforcement in our community and um, certainly offer a few opportunities for um, engagement that could potentially have a disparate impact on our community. Um, versus requesting more enforcement um, in order to um, move forward our public health concerns. Um, I also acknowledge that COVID has a disparate impact on our Black and Indigenous and people of color in our community. So those are the values that I'm sitting here holding and really trying to assess where this falls on that. I certainly have concern with the definition that I heard of welfare, public welfare, um, as, I mean, just because it mirrors state law doesn't mean that state law is the best law <laughs> or uses the best language. And I certainly think that there's room for us to improve on that. And I think that the definition of public welfare is so overbroad that it could be applied in nearly any situation, particularly talking about moral um, safety. That to me is wild <laughs> um, as, as a legal definition. Um, I also acknowledge that we have no roadmap for this conversation. We have never, as a commission, no one sitting here tonight has been through a pandemic as a city leader. Um, so we have a really difficult decision in front of us. And I think that I think that this discussion is important. I think that it's a really difficult decision. And any decision that we make tonight, I know that we're making with the best of intentions, with the best interests in our community. I just want to make sure that we're thinking about the whole community and we're doing what we can on really short notice to think about the impact on everyone in our community. Mayor, Commissioner Shibley, I want to thank you um, for uh, keeping your eye on the ball of the broader conversation that we've been having. Um, I think that's really important. And I, I will always say that dissent is important as well. Um, I want to suggest an, another way of looking at this, which is that we want to think about our police in a different way is what I hear um, the public saying, or they want the police to represent different values, as you say. So rather than thinking about them as law enforcement, this is an opportunity for us to think about them as public health officers. And I, so I, I feel like this is giving an opportunity um, for them to, to fill that space. And then we can, of course, continue the dialogue around um, things that, um, they should be backing off of or that we have not given them the tools for or that are, are not uh, appropriate uh, things for them to address. Um, so I just want to offer that um, as another way of looking at it. This is Mayor Nanda. I want to respond to that because I think that the very proposal that I made was that law enforcement is being able to is being asked to do things that are not their job and certainly being a public health officer is not in the law enforcement job description. Um, and so I, I will, that directly goes against exactly what I was asking us as a city to do, which is narrow the job that they're doing and we're expanding it with this. Well, I would just um, suggest there, thank you, uh, Mayor, uh, Commissioner Shipley, um, that I am going to say that I appreciate Vice Mayor Fingledye for bringing up that we 
haven't actually created a new law or expanded anything. We've simply given ourselves an ability to enforce something that already exists. This is me or not. I guess the other piece that I want to address in that is that the other request was that we find other city staff to um, enforce ordinances that are not criminal. And this is a citation, not a criminal matter is my either that or it's it's subject to jail time. But this isn't a misdemeanor. It's not a felony. Is that correct? Or is it a misdemeanor? City attorney Tony Wheeler, it would be a misdemeanor. So I also have a share with that. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Larson, um, I appreciate the conversations we're having on this. Um, Vice Mayor, um, I really like the way you kind of brought it together and, 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 and that this is, I almost look at this as almost like a bridge type ordinance to bring together those state state laws that, that we can use and we can handle at the, at the municipal level, which is a, a faster process from what I understand. Um, but I'm still concerned about the, the broadness of it. Um, uh, I do support this, uh, getting something in place so that we can have some enforcement, but I am concerned about the broad nature of how it's written, especially since all we've been talking about is we're trying to break up these parties. Um, I, I'm not hearing folks really wanting to uh, find anybody that's not wearing a mask or anything like that. So, so the fact that we're potentially in, throwing a big net out there. Um, I just don't want any, un any unintended consequences to happen from this. So, so um, I'll support this, but those are my, I have very strong concerns about that. Um, I am interested in a potential sunset because um, I'm actually, I always like sunsets on laws myself. Um, uh, so I would be interested in talking about a sunset. I think December, 2020 is a little soon for it, but if there's any other interest in that, I'm, I'm more than happy to talk about it. Mr. Commissioner Bowley, I think what I said was uh, December 31st, uh, 21. Um, I hope that's what I said. That's what I meant. Commissioner Shipley, that's what I heard. <laughs> Same. This is Commissioner Bowley, and I, I think that having a sunset on this addresses some of the concerns that have been raised by uh, the mayor and, and Commissioner Larson. And frankly, that I share. And I, again, this has been done very quickly. If it turns out this is really where we want to be at, you know, at December of, of 21, we can say, hey, it worked. We're going to continue it. Vice Mayor Finkel, I don't have a problem with the, with the sunset. If others don't like that, I'm fine with that. Commissioner Shipley, uh, is Tony perhaps ready with that language? Sure. Yes, I have a city attorney, Tony Wheeler, I apologize. I do have language. I've modified the motion um, and I'll read it to you and see if this um, gets at your point. The, I move we adopt on first and second reading ordinance number 9811, making it a municipal offense to maintain a public nuisance or to permit a public nuisance and establishing penalties therefore amended to add a subsection D to the ordinance providing for section 14-419 of the city code to sunset and expire automatically at 11.59 p.m. on December 31, 2021. Then from that, we would um, include that language into the ordinance uh, before it's published. Commissioner Larson, I did have a question. If, if we pass this tonight on both first and second reading, how quickly will it go into effect? Um, ordinances are effective when an, a summary of it is published in the official newspaper. And um, we've been in contact with the journal world and believe that publication could occur um, Saturday, possibly. Sherry might have additional information, but that's the information I received. So then it would be effective on once it's published in the newspaper. 
Sure, Rudiman City Clerk, that's correct. We pre for publication for of the summary in the instance that it was adopted tonight. And they, they said it could be in on Saturday. This is Melinda. I want to make it clear that clearly the house parties that are happening are a problem. And clearly there's behavior that is complete disregard for the safety of particularly the most vulnerable folks in our community. And that families have been making sacrifices for a very long time, every single one of us included, significant ones. Um, and I understand the crisis that we're all experiencing as we're going back to work, as we're going back into our communities and trying our best to make these, this community remain safe as we have done really well doing for a very long time during this pandemic. I have concerns with the language in this statue. I have concerns with the values that I've already mentioned. Um, I want to find a solution to this. I also acknowledge that there are four commissioners who are ready to go with what's written here with sunset language. Um, I think that there's a better answer. I acknowledge the urgency that's in front of us. Mayor Commissioner Shipley, what is the better answer you're suggesting? This is Mayor Ananda. Just like we didn't write this ordinance, I don't pretend to have those answers. I am not a health professional. I am not a public health professional. I am someone who has a master's degree in social work and law. This is Commissioner Boley. Um, I, I, I would like to mention that I had conversations with uh, Commissioner Thelman and Commissioner Kelly today and I appreciate their interest in this. I reached out them to them to see if they had answers that would be better than this. And I had wonderful conversations with them and they encouraged me to support this tonight because they don't have better answers that they could tell me about today. This is Mayor Ananda. I think one better answer is the university responding more rapidly and more aggressively. Um, I have no control over that. And I think it has been made clear that that wouldn't continue even if, even if we were able to get the names of those individuals oftentimes um, because of progressive discipline and an unwillingness to create a craft a policy that would directly address students who are in violation to this there's there's nothing that's going to happen there. If you want what I think is actually the answer, that's the answer. Commissioner Shipley, I, I do want to go back and I, I wish I could have said this earlier. I do not I do not consider this entirely focused on students. If there was a wedding or a funeral that this was happening at and I saw it and it got out of hand, I would have the same reaction. Um, I, I I appreciate that most of the discussion has been around students, but um, there are other reasons for people to gather. Mayor, as you mentioned, um, some of the events that are around town. So um, while I agree with the statement you just made, this applies to everyone. I expect everyone here in the community to um, observe the order and adhere to what we've all worked so hard, as you say, to sacrifice. Um, so I, I, that'll be harder for me. And as, as I said, I, I, I see the constraints that KU are, are under um, that possibly make it difficult or impossible for them to do more for us. This is Commissioner Boley and Mayor, I appreciate your mentioning the vulnerable people in our community. There are vulnerable people in our community that are relying on us relying on us to do what we can to ensure their safety during this pandemic. And, and that's what we need to do. This is Mayor Nanda, is there further discussion? Someone want to make a motion? This is Commissioner Bully. I'd like to make the motion that was read by uh, City Attorney Tony Wheeler. 
Commissioner Shipley, second. This is Mayor Nanda. We have a motion from Commissioner Bully, a second from Commissioner Shipley. Commissioner Bully? Aye. Commissioner Shipley? Aye. Vice Mayor Finkeldine? Aye. Commissioner Larson? Aye. Mayor Nanda, nay. Passes four to one with the mayor voting against. That is the extent of our agenda this evening. Mayor Ananda, this is Sherry Riedemann, City Clerk, and there were two actions suggested. There's also the, the MOU. MO Shall we do a second motion? I wasn't, I didn't pick up that Tony's didn't include that. Uh, it's Commissioner Bowley, I'll try again. It, I uh, do you, why, don't, why don't we pass that motion, do the separate motion for the MOU? Well, this is Commissioner Bowley, I think we already passed that motion. I'll try with the second motion if that's okay with everybody. Uh, this is Sherry Reedeman, City Clerk. That is correct. The other motion um, has been voted on, and so we'll just need someone to make a motion on the other piece. Thank you. This is Commissioner Boley. I move that we authorize the city manager to execute a memorandum of understanding with the University of Kansas and other appropriate parties for the enforcement of applicable state laws and or municipal offenses related to maintaining a public nuisance or permitting a public nuisance. Commissioner Larson, second. This is Mayor Nanda. We have a motion from Commissioner Bully, a second from Commissioner Larson. Commissioner Bully? Aye. Commissioner Larson? Aye. Vice Mayor Finkel, aye. Commissioner Shipley? Aye. Mayor Nanda, aye. That passes unanimously. That is the extent of our agenda. Do we have a Mr. motion? Commissioner Larson, I move to adjourn. Commissioner Bully, I second. Mayor Nanda, we have a motion from Commissioner Larson, a second from Commissioner Bully. Commissioner Larson? Aye. Commissioner Bully? Aye. Vice Mayor Finkel, aye. Aye. Commissioner Shipley? Aye. Mayor Nanda, aye. Thank you all for your work. Have a good night.